Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our pumpkins. So before we start, let's go through all our supplies to make sure we have everything that we're going to need for today. First thing you're going to need is a piece of watercolor paper and make sure you actually use appropriate paper for this. So either watercolor paper or um, multimedia paper or just a very thick paper. So don't use regular printer paper. You always need to have a nice thick paper. I'm using this exact one. So this is the one that I'm using. It's uh, nine by 12 inch. So you can use bigger, you can use smaller, completely up to you. The next thing you're going to need is a pencil because we're gonna start with a sketch. So I um, purposely didn't give you in advance the pre-sketch, which I actually made. Let me show it to you. Because I want you guys to have an option to pre-sketch it just in case you want to, or in case you want the little ones who want to join, but they would prefer to maybe make it more like a coloring book versus, you know, having to actually draw it. So I would make this pre-sketch available. You will see it in the description of the video. You will see a link where you can download it and print it and you can use that, no problem. But why I haven't given it to you guys is because I think you can totally handle it from scratch. It is quite fun and not too complicated to actually sketch this. So this is exactly why I didn't give you pre-sketch option in advance. I'm giving it to you now though just so you have it but yes we're gonna start with a pencil so make sure you have a pencil and an eraser because we're gonna be freehand sketching this and it is my favorite part actually sketching this all right and of course you're gonna need some sort of watercolor uh, paint um, set what watercolor I'm using is I'm gonna be using my uh, koi watercolor as you can see it's quite elaborate you don't need all that you just need um, three colors. That's all you need. You need a dark deep blue. Uh, you need um, some sort of light blue or teal. You need something for your leaves. Again, which we can make. You don't have to have that pre-mixed. You can just mix your blue, your teal, and your gray or black, and that will be the mixed color. And you need your gray. So basically, you need dark blue, light blue, or teal, and gray and the leaf color can be mixed out of those. So just three colors, more than enough for this painting. You don't need anything elaborate. So any watercolor palette, tube, um, dry watercolor cake palette like this one, anything will do. And again, you can use the most simple watercolor that you can find in any dollar store. It doesn't have to be a professional or anything special. Um, yeah, and you can totally choose different colors. You can make, let's say, one pumpkin um, light orange, one pumpkin dark orange, and one gray. Or you can do one pumpkin teal, one pumpkin orange, and one pumpkin gray. So you can experiment and you can decide for yourself which colors you would like to use. So in which case, go with your, with your favorite colors. Go with the colors of your choice. So that's what we're going to need. Of course, you're going to need a mixing tray. Uh, could be just a regular plate, by the way. It doesn't have to be a special watercolor tray. And we're going to need a couple of brushes. For this painting, I would recommend having two different brushes. So medium or medium small, something along those lines, because those are not very large uh, pumpkins, so you're not going to need large brush at all. And you definitely need a good, small, detailed um, brush. So number one, number zero, or number two, but something really small with a pointy tip. I might even switch to even smaller one. This one is pretty small, but I have a lot of small ones. So just grab something small. All right, and you know how a lot of the time we start with taping the edges of our paper to the table? In this case, you don't need to do that because it is not a full coverage painting. It's mostly just stays closer to the center. So you don't need a painter's tape for this one. But if you prefer to use it, you're welcome to as well. So it's completely up to you whether you're going to be using it today or not. 
And I'm going to be showing you my colors here just so it's easier to see versus on my watercolor where everything is so dark and small so you can't really see the color. And that's pretty much it. So right guys, what we're going to start with is we're going to sketch our pumpkins. So I'm going to put this one away and you guys can refer to the one that is on your right right here. Yeah. And I'll be showing you this one every now and then as well. Oh, by the way, last um, element that we're going to need, last piece of supply is we're going to need a fine tip sharpie or a black pen. But you're going to need that in the very, very end so you don't need it right now. So what are we going to do? We're going to start by sketching our pumpkins. And guys, remember, this is a video recording. So pause it as many times as needed. This is the way it's designed for. Uh, this is the way it's designed. This is what it's designed for. It's designed for you to go at your own pace. So don't try to keep up with my pace. If you need to take a break, take a break. If you need to ten, take ten, 10 breaks, take 10 breaks. So just take as many breaks as needed. Enjoy the process. Go at your own pace. The video is going to stay right here on our YouTube. It's not going anywhere. So don't be afraid to not finish it with me today. You can finish it over a course of a few days if that works better for you. All right. So... What I'm going to start with is I'm going to actually take my pencil and I'm going to put three ovals. I'm going to start with the one in the middle. So it's going to be not right in the middle. It's going to be a little bit to the left. So here I'm going to put an oval. This is just for me to know where my pumpkin is going to be located. Then I'm going to put another oval turn towards the other side. And you see they're lightly overlapping one another. So that's for me to know where my second pumpkin I'm going to be located. And then I'm going to put my third oval similar to my second one. It could be slightly different angle. It could be a bit bigger. It could be a bit smaller. Like they don't have to be exactly the same. I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. But also if they are the same, that's all right. Not a problem. So now I have my three ovals, so I know where my pumpkins are going to be located. So now I'm going to start turning those into actual pumpkins. So let's start with this one, since we started with it already. So here I'm going to put my stem. So I just marked it with like a little oval. Now I'm going to sketch it. So I'm going to start by uh, putting one curved line. And then I'm going to add another curved line. All right, and that's my stem. And of course, once you've done it, you can always just clean it up to erase everything underneath it. Or you can clean it up later. That's okay, too. All right, that's my stem. And now I'm going to start turning this into pumpkin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide it into sections, starting with this one in the middle. So I always start with the one that's right in the middle. And just from here, I'm going to add a curved line. And then I'm going to add similar curved line on the other side. And once I have that, I'm going to curve them both in the middle and merge them into one another. So do you see? I added like a little nice curve in the bottom. Great. Now I'm going to add more sections here. So those are going to be like slices of orange, really. I'm going to bring one more here. And then curve it here, bring it to the bottom, to my middle one. Just continue doing that, going 
further and further with every single following one. And it doesn't matter how many of those you have, so I wouldn't go, you know, I wouldn't start counting them because that's irrelevant. As long as they look good and spaced out properly, that's really what matters here. And then I'll do something similar on the other side. And again, they don't have to match exactly in size or in shape or in amount. You can have more on one side, more or less on the other. As long as the, it looks good, as long as it's... Um, looks proportionate that's all that matters here all right that's my first pumpkin and i'm gonna clean it up so of course you're gonna erase everything underneath it and just clean up your lines too. If you noticed when I sketch, I usually add a couple lines. I don't just do one line. So usually I would erase pretty much everything so I can hardly see it and then I'll just go over it with my final lines. All right, so that's my pumpkin number one. Now I'm gonna move on to this one, pumpkin number two, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. It's just the direction is gonna be different. So again, I'm gonna start by positioning my uh, stem. It can be any shape. It can be curved to the left, to the right, doesn't matter. I'm gonna stay true to my original painting and I'll curve it to the left. And then I'm going to turn that into a pumpkin and I will actually overlap this one. So again, I'm starting in the middle section. All right, and again, I'm gonna clean it up now.
All right, and then I'm gonna do the same exact same thing for the third time with my last pumpkin. Alright, so that's my three pumpkins and now I'm going to uh, move on to sketching my little branches, those little swirlies and the leaves. I would prefer to sketch my leaves first just to balance out the image. This is exactly why I was starting with something larger. So we, we're actually working from the biggest to the smallest. So we're starting with the biggest elements, pumpkins. So we're laying out the base with our pumpkins. Now, do you see how there are certain gaps that could be filled to balance out the image a little better? So now we're gonna fill those with our leaves and then we're gonna do a final touch. So again, it's like a balancing act altogether. So the final touch, again, it will balance it even more of the uh, little branches and the swirlies. So leaves, I'm gonna start with, I'll position a leaf right here. So the leaf, um, they're just like a three pieces, right? But they're gonna be more of a zigzaggy. So start by just, you know, sketching out a three piece leaf so you know where that goes. Yeah, and once you have that, we're gonna turn it into actual leaf by zigzagging it like this. Okay. 
and that's one leaf then I'm gonna add a second one right here and it's gonna be not fully visible and one right here that's not gonna be fully visible either so again I'm just starting by lightly sketching the positioning of it and the size and then um, I'm gonna go with a zigzaggy line and position the actual leaf great then I'm gonna add a small leaf right here and again same deal I'm just sketching it lightly first and I'm gonna add actual leaf and I only have one more leaf left I'm gonna do do you see this one is not fully visible you only see a portion of it as well so somewhere around here so again I'm gonna just sketch it lightly first and then I'm gonna go and sketch it properly Alright, that's awesome. Now we're going to position our swirlies and our uh, branches. So I'm going to start with the branches and I'm just going to add directional lines for the branches first. So I'm going to add the directional line here. And here I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one right here. And I'm going to do two right here as well. You can position yours wherever they make sense for your painting. You don't have to position them in the exact same areas that I'm positioning mine. Honestly, do whatever makes sense for your painting. Because again, you just we're just using them to balance everything out. So if it makes sense to position them in the different places, position them in the different places. And I'm going to position my swirlies. So I'm going to position one somewhere here. Actually, maybe I'll make this one a little bit higher. The good thing about starting with a pencil is you can always erase it and redo it. And you can continue doing that until you find a perfect positioning for your elements. You don't have to go through with something that you're not quite happy with. Oh yeah, I like that. And again, if those are not the best areas for your painting, find the ones that work better and just go with those that work better for you. And now I'm gonna add leaves, the small leaves on my branches. And how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna start with the end leaf and then I'm gonna do one on each side, one on the left, one on the right and so on. Or you can just do one side first and then do second side whatever works for you guys here Now notice how everything is quite dark with my pencil. This is one element that I would actually like quite light. So I'm going to lighten them up a little bit.
And honestly, guys, you can take this even further. And you can add a couple more elements to this, but you can also add them later too. You can add, for example, a little butterfly sitting somewhere here, like on a swirl, or um, just like a butterfly here and butterfly here. You can add a little ladybug. Um, you can add a little kitty picking behind, you know, this pumpkin. Let's say you can add like a little cat face here. Just letting you know what can be done here. Like there's a lot of options. You can position a little bird. Just, you know, approximately things that can be done. There are a lot of things that can be done here. But yes, that's our sketch. So again, everything is staying quite dark because again, we're going to add the black outline except the only light elements that you want, I want to have are my branches. I would like them to be a bit lighter. So now once we have that, we can move on to our painting part. So I'm going to put my pencil and eraser aside. And let's talk about colors. So for my top pumpkin, which is going to be great, which is the one that I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to be using just black. You can use black. Uh, I have two blacks, doesn't matter at all which black you use, whichever. For my stems, I actually, sorry guys, I forgot to tell you, there is a brown in the stems. So for my stems, I actually use dark brown, but you're welcome to do them in gray. If you want to stick with just three colors, gray is totally fine. They will still look great, but I find that it's brown is very compatible um, with the other colors that we have here, so I'm going to be using brown. You can use absolutely any brown that you have. I'm going to be using this one. Um, then for my teal pumpkin, I have a large variety of light blues and teal, so doesn't matter whichever. Just whichever is your favorite shade of teal or blue, go with that one. Again, I have like a variety. And for the dark blue, again, totally up to you. I'm going to be going with this one because... I just personally like that shade of blue, but honestly, any blue that makes you happy, you can go with that one. I might even mix this too. So just some sort of dark blue. There's no particular blue that you have to have. And for the leaves, I'm going to be mixing my color because I actually don't have this color. Um, I mixed it originally when I was making it. It's like a grayish teal or like mixture between um, green and blue. It's very cold, but not emerald. Emerald is like a cold uh, green is a cold green as well. But that one is not really that. It's more like a dusty teal color. So you could technically just take the same teal you're using for your pumpkin and mix in a little bit of gray and it will give you a very similar color. Or you can mix in a little bit of green as well. If you just want to have it a bit more sage-ish um, color. So again, you can use just your favorite color too. So it's really laid back when it comes to color. Any color here will, will work. It's not really about color uh, itself. It's about compatibility of colors, of course. So just to use compatible colors. But also it's about technique. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab my tray and I'm going to grab my medium light and I'm actually going to start by adding the base on my teal pumpkin and on my dark blue pumpkin and while they dry I'm going to go and add um, details on my white pumpkin because white pumpkin does not require a base coat. The base coat is just white. So for, I'm going to start with my teal one. I'm going to grab the teal that I'm going to use or a light blue, whichever you choose again. Super, super light version of that. I think I'm going to go with this one. And if you guys are using acrylic paint, which you totally can, you're just going to need to water it down to this consistency, to the consistency of slightly tinted water. So it shouldn't be like you're using pigment. It should be really like using tinted water. 
And with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm pretty much gonna color it in. And then you can grab a little bit more pigment, mix it into your water. And then you can add a little bit of a darker area closer to this top part. So do you see I'm adding a little bit more saturated area closer here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water, just straight water, maybe dab off my brush slightly on a paper towel. Where's my paper towel? Right here it is. I'm just gonna dab off slightly so I don't have too much water. And then I'm gonna spread it with just water going down. So do you see what cre it created? Um, slightly darker section right here and then it gradually gets lighter. great and I can do something similar on the bottom so I can just add a couple lines like this you see on the edge on the bottom then I will wash off my brush lightly dab it off on a paper towel and we just blend it towards the middle with water so it does still look a little bit darker on the edge but it also looks merged it doesn't look just like a separate brush strokes all in all, this is pretty solid coverage on that pumpkin. And keep it light. That's important that you stay quite light for this one. And if it's a little brush stroky, that's okay. That's a good thing. Um, now I'm going to go for my bottom pumpkin. So you're going to grab the blue that you decide to go with. But again, quite watered down. So the consistency of dirty water. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to mix two blues. But you're welcome, guys, to grab any dark blue. There's no particular shade that it has to be. It really is a personal preference on a shade. So I'm going to water it down a little bit. Do you see the consistency again? Very, very watery. And I'm going to do something similar, but now, do you see how light it is? I'm going to be leaving certain areas completely white. So if you want to leave a couple gaps right in the middle of your um, sections, you can. All right, so that's a good base, but right away you could do the same thing that we've done on our uh, first pumpkin, is just make it a little bit more saturated. You see a little bit more saturated, and I'm going to go closer here. I'm just going to add a bit more of this color. And then I'm going to wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and just, you know, 
with a couple of brush strokes spread it down and I'll do the same on the bottom So like this and I'm gonna wash off my brush dab it off on a paper towel and just a little bit blend it towards the middle with the water you don't have to blend it to a perfect blending if it's still brush stroking that's good you just want to get rid of extra brush stroking is to have it somewhat merged so do you see it's nice and airy and it has this beautiful brush strokiness but also you can tell that it's a solid object Alright, great. Let those two dry. And as they're dry, we can start working either on our leaves on our, or on our gray pumpkin. I think we should start working on our gray pumpkin. So for the gray pumpkin, I'm just going to go with my small brush. So I'm going to put this one aside and I'm going to grab my small brush. And how, what we're going to do with our gray pumpkin, I'm actually going to lighten it up a bit too. Um, you don't have to lighten up the whole thing, but do you see right here? Right in the middle on this painting you can't really see the dark lines the dark lines I'm gonna be adding closer to the bottom and the top and the outline right here they look a little more soft and blended so that's the area that I would like to lightly lighten up so I don't see my harsh lines in the end All right, great, 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 great. And now what are we gonna do is we're gonna build from light to dark. So grab your super watered down black. It has to be very, very light for starters. So do you see a consistency that I'm using? A super, super light gray water. And you're just gonna grab very little bit of it and maybe let's get closer here, I guess. And I'm going to start adding brush strokes. They're going to be flicks from the bottom and from the top. Like this. And you see how light they are. That's super important for this pumpkin that you start light because the more layers you're going to add, the more the darker it's going to get the intensity it's going to build um it's going to be built in layers so the more you overlap the uh darker your brush strokes get so this is what i'm going to do for every single section and again notice how light my paint is it's just a slightly dirty water that's all it is Then I'm gonna add a couple of brush strokes here. So do you see I'm reserving that middle, keeping that light. Because you want this pumpkin to be overall super, super light.
Alright, so do you see this is the beginning of that pumpkin? Now for the next layer what we're going to do is we're just going to make slightly darker gray. Not much darker, just a slightly darker one. I think this should work. Do you see it's just a little bit darker than my first one? Let's try it. And I'm going to add a little bit more of those brush strokes. This time I'm just going to add less of them than for the first layer. Oh yeah, do you see it's a little darker? So I'm going to continue adding the brush strokes. I'm just going to add a bit less of them this time. So again, from the top and the bottom, following the direction and the shape, you know, just the directional lines and the shape of my pumpkin. Yes, good. All right, then that's our pumpkin number one. Now, after that, I'm gonna leave that one alone and I'm gonna move to the bottom one and I'll do the exact same thing. So on a second one, um, and I'm gonna use my teal color. You can use either the same teal color, more saturated, or you can actually move to maybe a darker teal, whatever you wanna do. But I would just recommend using the same one, just a little bit more saturated this time. I'm gonna try that. That might actually be a little more too saturated. Uh, where's my paper towel? All right. Oh yeah, that's good. So do you see very, very light? It's all, again, it's all about building the intensity using a very light sheet. And we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did with the top pumpkin. So we're going to add a brush strokes that mostly come from top and the bottom.
All right, and next color, I'm actually gonna use the color from the bottom. So I'm gonna grab just a little bit of quite watered down bottom pumpkin color. And I'll add just a little bit of that right here, so closer to the bottom. Oh, actually, that's a little too dark even. So super, super watered down. And add a little bit of that on the bottom here, and you will you will see it will just give it a little tint um, of that color. And I'll use just a touch of that on the top as well. Notice how light is the paint that I'm using. Again, just the consistency of a tinted water. Great. And using the same teal that we just used for this pumpkin. So the teal that we used, again, very, very watered down. Like super light, as you can see, it's incredibly light. I'm going to add a smidge of that to the outline of this pumpkin. So the color from here I bring here, color from here I bring here, as little as possible. Just a very, very small accent. See, it's hard to see it, but it's there. Great, and now we're gonna move to our uh, bottom pumpkin. So I'm just gonna grab more saturated dark blue. I think this would be good and this one is a little bit different so here if I made small brush strokes here I'm gonna make a bit more of a wider brush strokes in a similar way so I'm gonna bring them mostly from the top and the bottom but you can do larger brush strokes and just cover larger areas And then I'm going to add one more layer, even darker here. So notice again how I'm keeping the lightest sections at the middles of my sections later. And the darkness mostly goes around the edge of those separation lines plus top and the bottom. So I'm going to go even darker now. So I'm just going to get even more saturated 
blue and I will just add a little bit of that. So with every layer, the darker I go, the less of it I add. All right, that's my three pumpkins. So now I'm gonna move on to my leaves and I'm gonna start by mixing a color from my leaves. So let's start with our teal. So let's grab the base of teal. And let's add a little bit of black to that teal. And yep, that's exactly the color that I'm going to be using for my leaves. Maybe a little bit more to a little less black. But you guys are welcome to mix your own. So let me show you the color that's happened for me. Oh yeah, I'm loving this color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to color in my leaves with quite a light version of this. That's one leaf. The second one. And of course, I'm going to color in this swirly too. Uh, let's do third one. And of course, I'm going to do the swirly as well. And then my last leaf here. All right, um, 
Now, another thing that I want to do with some leaves is darken up the end. So I'm just going to take a bit more of my paint. And I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to add a bit more of it to the edge. Then I'm going to wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with just water, I'm going to smudge it down. And you see it creates this ombre effect where it's darker in the end and lighter on uh, closer to the middle. And maybe I'll do the same thing here. But you don't have to do it. You can just leave your leaves like they are, but you can add a bit of ombre too. All right, I'm happy with this. And now what I'm gonna be doing for my uh, branches is I'm gonna be starting with a bit more saturated paint and then I'm not gonna be refilling my brush. So as I run out of paint, it's gonna be getting lighter, lighter, and lighter. So I'm gonna start in the end. I filled my brush right now. I'm gonna start right in the end. And then I'm gonna do one leaf on the left, one on the right, and so on. And I'm gonna continue working my way down the branch. Don't do your um, branch itself, just the leaves. And just continue working. Just don't refill your brush and you will notice that you will start running out of paint um, and all the following ones are going to get later, later and later. And if you grab too much paint and it didn't happen, what you could do, as soon as you did this, grab your paper towel and just lightly dab off the ones that are closer to the bottom that will lighten them up and then refill your brush and do it again on the next one And then I'm, do, I'm gonna do this one. And you can just start dabbing it off halfway through on, through on a paper towel too, just to make it a little bit lighter to get rid of the paint faster. You see, I'm not washing my brush. I'm really just getting rid of some paint to make it um, appear lighter. And this creates a beautiful ombre effect. And if they're not ombre, that's totally fine too. They can just be the same color. That's not a problem. All right, so I have my leaves, my branches, the only thing, and my pumpkins, the only thing I don't have is my brown. So I'm gonna grab my brown now on my same small brush. So I'll wash it off and I'm gonna grab my brown. And again, as I mentioned earlier, any brown will do. and make it saturated and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go right on the end here bring it down a little and I'm gonna wash my brush 
dab it off on a paper towel and with a clean wet brush I'm just gonna spread it down so that again it creates that ombre effect of it being darker on top and a little lighter on the bottom and then I'm gonna repeat it for every single one of them This one maybe I will darken up a bit more actually because it's such a dark pumpkin so maybe I will add a bit more of an outline um, in dark brown and using the same brown I'm just going to add the middles for my branches. They don't have to be too dark, but they have to be on a darker side, so medium to dark is good. Alright, great. I'm gonna wash off my brushes. I will put them aside. You always wanna wash off your brushes right away to make sure they are staying in a good condition because if you don't, um, your paint will ruin brushes. So always, always wash them off right away and put them aside before moving on to anything next. All right, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to our outline and I'm going to be using just regular fine tip Sharpie. It's, you see it says ultra fine point, just regular Sharpie. You can use more fancy supplies like micron pens or anything else. Absolutely, whatever you prefer. This is just sold in bulk in a regular dollar store. It's like a couple dollars for a bunch of them. So... Uh, that's what I will be using. And we're just going to add a bit of an outline to everything, except we're still going to try to keep um, our tops and bottoms darker, the middles a bit lighter, and the bottoms of the branches are going to be lighter than the tips of the branches. So I'm going to start with my pumpkins. And make sure your pumpkins are super, super dry for this. You don't want to do this on the wet. So when I outline, sometimes in certain areas, I'm going to add more than one brush stroke. Just to keep that darkness going. Sorry, not brush stroke, line. So used to same breaststroke.
right now I'm going to move on to this pumpkin. Alright, so that's my pumpkin number two. And then I'm going to move to my pumpkin number three. All right, and now I'm gonna move on to my swirlies and my leaves. You don't have to outline your swirly with two lines. You can just do one line if you want, or just even a couple flicks. All right, and now I'm gonna move on to uh, my branches. So I'm gonna start at the end again, and then whenever I want to, I'm gonna stop. And some of them, you know, I'm gonna start with a full leaf, and then I'm gonna do half leaf, and then just a little flick, and then I'm gonna stop. You can do the entire branch if you want to as well. So it's, it really is completely up to you how much of it you're gonna do. If you would prefer to do the whole branch versus you know, almost like fading it out as you go, do that, totally fine, whatever works for you. So do you see what I'm talking about? I'm gonna get closer here. You see, I started by doing the full outline and then half, half, less, less, just a flick, done. So here too, started by doing the whole thing, less, less, 
flick, 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 gone. So it almost fades. And I'm going to do the same thing on the next one. And again, if it's not your personal preference, or you just not, you know, maybe it's not turning out the way you prefer it to, you can do the entire thing or just leave them without outline. That's okay too. All right, and then last thing, well, almost last thing that I want to do is I want to add a couple of those bubbles. You see, there are just a few that are like, again, balancing act. So I'm just going to add a couple of those bubbles wherever you feel like they would be beneficial for your painting. Just add a few, some bigger, some smaller. If you don't feel like you should have any, then don't add them. They are not a requirement. They're just something nice and little, again, to help balance it out. And that is it. Last thing that you need to do is to sign it. So I'm just going to put my initials right here. But you can go big and bold and sign it anywhere. You can sign it on the bottom. You can sign it here. You can sign it here, here, um, you know, here, anywhere you want. And this is pretty much it, guys. As I mentioned earlier, I found that, you know, working on the shapes and positioning was a really cool part of it. Um, but working, of course, with watercolor and finishing up with Sharpie just gives it a very polished look. So that is done. If you would like to share it with us, please do. We love seeing how your paintings turned out. And you can do that by taking a photo and you can post it on Facebook. We have two Facebook groups. One is called Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region. I'm gonna link it in the description of the video. And that group is specifically created for everyone who is on a journey to discover watercolors and explore it as a medium and learn. So basically it's a group for people who are on the same journey and you know to walk along with each other and learn together. So feel free to uh, take a photo and post it there. Or we have another group. Um, it's called Free Events by Artist Palette Durham Region. So you can take a photo and post it there as well. There we just encourage everyone uh, who participated in our tutorials to post their results regardless of the medium. So that group is not particular to watercolor. It's just a group for everyone who participated in any of our events. And as you may no or not, no, we do a lot of events and we have some uh, in acrylic. Majority, I would say, actually is our acrylic events. Then we have some in watercolor. We have some awesome drawings. We even have macrame events. So we have a variety of mediums. So, oh, we have um, oil. We haven't hosted oil in a, in a while, but we do have them. So that group is for anyone who wants to post their uh, results. So feel free to post it in either one of those or both, whatever works for you guys. We would love to see them. And of course, feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for more upcoming free events and video releases. But also feel free to check out our Zoom events. We have lots of Zoom events on our website. Um, I will also link that in the description of this video. And if you guys had fun and you want to say thank you by tipping me, I would never say no to that. Tips are always, always welcome and appreciated, and they help us to make more videos just like this one for you. And for those who've already tipped me, 
uh, through our website. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. So that's it for me for today. And I will see you again. Bye everyone.